What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Today is September 3rd. Um, today we have three stories about the Indian of laughing and being sameach and different things like that, obviously in Kedusha ways. And uh, very, very interesting stories that do with the Chayza of Lublin and different tzaddikim, Rabbi Baruch HaMezhubosh. Very interesting things going on. So let's just get into it. I don't like wasting time, obviously. I just like to talk and say the stories. So it says over here, the first story. Uh, there was this chassid, Rabbi Yehuda Leib of Strafkov. And they called him the Yashish. The Yashish is like a legendary term. He's like He was he was also very old age. I think it's like because he's legendary because he's so old and he's always there, whatever. It's an interesting term. I don't know the exact translation of it. But he was a very old chassid. And he moved to Yushalayim. And he was very attached to Rav David of Lelov, the Lelov Rebbe, and he was mis and he was miskasher to him with all of his soul. And then this guy died. Rav Yudah Leib of Strafkov was nifter. He passed away. And on the Maitzi Shabbos after he died, which was two weeks before his Rebbe, the Rav of of, of Lelov died. So on that Maitzi Shabbos after the first guy died, Rav Yudah Leib, right? So the Lelav Rebbe was sitting by the Suda's Lelav Malka, and he told over a story that had something to do with Rabbi Huda Leib, as we'll see at the end. So he said that there were two Hasidim of the Chayza of Lublin who wanted to go to the Rebbe for Rosh Hashanah, and they set out on the way, but they had no money. And they needed money to travel, obviously, so they were trying to figure out and, uh, something to make a little bit of cash, and they decided that one of them should become like a Rebbe, like make himself look like a Rebbe, and the other one should be like the Shamish, and they'll go around, and they'll cut a little bit of tzedakah and find places to stay, and everything like that. Chasvah not only stealing, but, uh, you know, just like saying, I'm a Rebbe, let me into your home, let me have a little meal, give you a bracha, things like that. So they started doing this, and they heard that in one of the places on the way to the Rebbe, there was a very rich guy who did not have children, and he went to all the, all the tzaddikim ready in the world, and nobody could help him at all. And they were like, let's go there, we'll go into his house. So they went, the shamash went in, said, I have his rebel, he's very holy, you want a place to stay, some food, he'll give you a big bracha for, the, for, for, having a, for having a baby. And this rich guy was like, I don't even want to talk to you guys, I know, I, like, I already know all the rebels, all they do is take my money, and they go, and nothing works, get out of here. He said, no, but not this rabbi. He said, this rabbi is different. And he said, why is he different? He said, because he writes amulets. He writes commands. So he said, what's that? He said, he writes a little thing you put on your neck and you wear it and this and that. And then you'll be able to have a child. And it works all the time. So the rich guy was like, whoa, good stuff. We'll bring you, let's bring him in. So they bought him the rabbi. And, and they wrote and he wrote and so he wrote a kamea for the guy obviously he didn't even know what he was writing you have to be an expert to write a kamea and he gave it to the rich guy and they left and they went to the rebel a year passed again it's coming up Rosh Hashanah hopefully we'll all be in Uman for Rosh Hashanah as well going and they were going to the rebel again this is one year later and they decided that they didn't want to go past this guy's house obviously in the town, because obviously their command wasn't going to work, so this guy would see them, and then he's going to get angry at them, and then, you know, it's not going to be a good thing. So they skipped around his town, and they got to the Chayza, and they walked in, and they see this rich guy standing in the room of the Chayza, and they were terrified. And all of a sudden, they, were, they saw that this guy came to the Rebbe to be Mechavim with being a sandik at his son's bris and they were like wow our bracha our kamea thing worked and they came in and whatever and it was all happiness and awesome right so the chayza saw them and he said you guys know what this person had this rich guy had he said that he had a mechitza shel barzel he had a steel wall that any tefillah that was said because of him for whatever reason, was blocked by this steel wall. He davened, all the tzaddikim davened, nothing could get by this wall, this spiritual wall. 
that was blocking whatever it was whatever the reason why he had it that I don't know but but you guys you guys didn't know anything someone just could not know anything so what you do you wrote for him a command that had in it four letters mem kuf mem mem kuf mem dalad Rashi Tevis Mitra Korva Milkadai. Does it make sense? And the translation is in English an older and he's sorry, and the translation in English means even an older cow gives milk. And because you wrote this in the Kamea, this was this 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 awakened a huge laughter in Shemayim. And this laughter was able to break and make a little crack in this wall that was blocking his tefillahs. It's all very deep in Yonim, obviously. Um, because there's no laughter, really, but up there. Um, but whatever it means in the deeper Kabbalistic things, I have no idea. But he was, be he was, be he was being able to be to make Shemayim laugh and break a little crack in the wall and once there was a little crack in the wall all the tefillahs that are waiting around the wall for years they were able to enter in and he was able to have a child and now the Rebbe continued the story he said, sorry, and he continued at the Suda he said, Rabbi Hudalayb when he went up to Shemayim they asked him there who are you a chassid of? and he answered of David of Love, because he's my chassid. And there was big laughter. He's also a Rebbe? And that was the story. And he was able to, his chamek, I guess, get away from punishment or sins or whatever the judgment was, because of this tzchay gadol too. And he went in there. And he was able to get in, I guess, to Ganeidin, whatever it was. And when he, when he finished these words... And when he saw that everybody had there was this big Roshim there, he said, Bring my Machinim and they benched. And and uh, and it was a very big wonder because afterwards it became known to them that right before Rabbi Udaleb died, he sent he told his son Pitiraza Bike Sharav Yudle right right Rav Yudah asked his sons to go mention his name before the Rav HaKadosh of Lelov. So obviously there was a connection between those two tzaddikim and also in Shemayim too and it's very holy. Alright, now there's another story here. Two more stories. Sometimes it's good to laugh in Kedusha, you never know. Maybe you're being Ma'ayr, it's like in Shemayim. Who knows? He said... This is a, a different story. The Rav HaKadosh, Rav Baruch HaMezhuz, was making a wedding one time. And when the wedding was getting very happy, the Rav HaKadosh, Rav Baruch HaMezhuz, turned to his Shamish, Rav Herschel of Ostropoli. Now, if you don't know who Rav Herschel of Ostropoli is, he was, it's known, the Shem Tzadikim, that they sent him down from Shemayim to make Rav Baruch HaMezhuz happy tell jokes and different things like that and it says over here that one time Rav Baruch said to Rabbi Herschel he said even if you met the Malach, I don't want to say his name he has a name, I don't know if you're supposed to say his name or not, but this is an evil Malach who punishes you, not evil I guess whatever it is, this is one of the Malach, this is one of the Malachim who punish you with very intense punishments that are written in Svarim he said to but we're not going to say his name because I don't know if you're supposed to, whatever it is. But he said that if you say, if he said to Rav Herschel, he said, even if you met this Malach, you could probably get away from him just by telling him a gleich vertu, a joke. So he was telling him that, you know, your jokes are very high, there's big in Yonim in your jokes. But anyway, he said, now everybody is at this wedding, everyone's very happy. But, you know, you and you usually, Rav Herschel, when everyone is sad, you try to make everyone happy. So do the opposite. Now everyone's happy, let's do something serious. Say something serious to me. So Rav Herschel said to him, okay. And he said to him, the word chuppah 
is made up of the letters Chef Pei, Ches Pei, Vav Hei. Ches and Ches Pei is the Lashen Chap, the, to grab onto, you chap this, you know, you got this, you understand it, or Chap, to grab on, you know. And the Vav K, the Vav He at the end, is the last letters of, oh, sorry, it's Hema Asvana Chaseris Mishem Havaya Baruchu, right? Yud Kiyaro Case Kaf, right? The Vav He is two letters that are missed. Sorry, you, right, it's the two last letters of the Shem Havaya, sorry. Yud, yud ke vav ke, right? So that he's saying that during the Shas Chupa, which is Ches the Chap, so you could Chap the Vav ke. By the Chupa, you could Chap the Vav ke, which is Hashem. You could Chap the full name. Because it's Tadikim that come there from the upper world. So that was an interesting thought that he had. Um, it says over here also, speaking of now we're in the corona times and all these different things that the Misa that there was one time a Magefa, a plague, Rachman Lutzlan, in the era of Mezhbush Bizman Arava Kodesh Arabi Rabbarach Behebinu HaChasidim Sharebi Shore Beshivran Lev and the Chasidim saw that the Rebbe was sitting very depressed from, from, from and sad from this from this Kizera right and he was not able to be Besimcha right he wasn't able to become Simcha so that he would be able to be Mivatul the Gzair. And they sent Rav Herschel of Ashtapoli to, to, what's it called, to um, make him, to, you know, to make him happy. And he went to the Rebbe and he started doing, and he started, and he said to the Rebbe, oh, you should know that this pandemic, this Magifa already stopped and you can already be happy. And the Rebbe said, what are you talking about, stop? I see from my window that there's a funeral going on of somebody who just died from the plague. How could you be happy? And Rav Herschel answered back, no, they're not taking him to the cemetery. They're already taking him back from the cemetery to bring him back alive. And Vesachak Harav HaKadosh Harabi Baruch and Harav HaKadosh Rabbi Baruch laughed. Benetra HaMagefa and the Magefa stopped. So with his laughter, he was able to stop the plague. That's a good schmuck story, man. And this is the last story. This one is a little intense over here. But uh, let's see what this one says. This, like I said, also has to be besimcha. So we have to try to be besimcha as much as we can. It said, the Rabbi Kaddish of Shlema of Bavav said, he said over a story in the when he was at the Tanoim of his first grandson, Rabbi Shua Rubin Shlita. Um, yeah, he said over the story that in the time of World War, uh, in the Second World War, the Holocaust, I think, was in Nechta and Nichla, in Master, in Nimark, Nimark, that when the Bava Rabbi, Rav Shlomo Bava, was, was held in captured, whatever, in this city, began Arab Shabbos Kodesh, partially by Leisko in the year, Tesla of Sivan Tavshin Gimel. He was, he was, he was, he was, um, he was in the, he was captured in the city with his son, Harav HaKadosh, Rav Naftali Tzvi of Bavov. And it seemed to them that it would be um, the last Shabbos of their life and after Shabbos, they're going to be brought out to be killed. So the Rav Kodesh turned on Shabbos night to his son, and he said to him, I have one last thing to ask of you. And he said to his son in this Lashon, he said, try to remember all the good days that we had by dancing by the Hakafos, B'Simchus Torah, all those good moments, those happy moments, or wherever, or whenever we, we were going to to gather Mayim Shalanu for the matzos, and they would sing B'Simcha Gedayla. He says we're not going to bake any more matzos and we're not going to do any more hakafas. But there's only one more thing for us to do. He says tomorrow when they bring us out to die, Al Kedush Hashem, this is what I'm asking you. You're a kid. I've enough told you as a child, and I think. 
and they are not going to torture you at all, right? But me, like the like this non-Jewish said, that I guess they already know at this point that they're gonna try to ah, they're gonna try to they're gonna try to get information out of me. Who was the one who tried to smuggle me out of the country? Whatever I don't know the full story, right? And they're going to and they are going to do a lot of bad things to me. And you're gonna see how they're gonna hit me and torture me, and the blood's gonna pour. So then you should scream together. We should scream together. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. We should do this besimcha. Ki kol mitzvah kimoi rikidas hakafo is he besimcha. Kisholchem akid Hashem tzvichin gan kim li besimcha. He said there's no difference in hakafos and being I mean, like he said all the mitzvahs have to do with simchas so even if it's dying al kiddush Hashem it has to be simcha too, right? He said he used to, and he and he was telling his son try not to cry then just be besimcha and say Shema Yisrael. But the child broke out and crying and he says I can't look what they're going to do to you. I hope that they'll kill me first because I don't want to see my father in tzar. And I guess they didn't really get killed, right? Because Rosh Hashanah Baba was like alive after. I'm gonna write that. Up. I'm gonna clarify that in the comments after I look that up. But anyway, those are the stories for today, and they're pretty wild. So let's just try to have a little simcha. Is Hashem, and um, everything should be good. Chaim.